supported us um, as we continue to grow in the spirit of Hamashiach, and uh, we want to give all honors and double honors to the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to our King, our Lord, and our Savior, Yehoshua Hamashiach. We want to give double honors to all the elders out there pushing the truth and sincerity uh, and truth, and um, most definitely honors to our elder, uh, Elder Adair from the House of Adair. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Uh, so, uh, without further ado, we will be uh, standing up to go into prayer and praise. Everybody rise. We're going to start with the Psalms. We're going to start at Psalms 87. Psalms 87. As our Ak, Josiah calls out. Hallelujah. 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 His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates. The Lord loveth the gates. Of Zion more than. Of Zion more than. The dwellings of Yaakov. The dwellings of Yaakov. Glorious things are spoken. Glorious things are spoken. Of thee. Of thee. O city of God. O city of God. Selah. Selah. I will make mention. I will make mention. Of Rahab. Of Rahab. And Babylon. And Babylon. To them that know me. To them that know me. Behold, 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 Philistia, Philistia, and Tyre, and Tyre, with Ethiopia, with Ethiopia, this man was born there, this, this man was born there, and of Zion, and, and of Zion, Zion, it shall be said, it shall be said, this and that, this and that, man was born in her, man was born in her, and the highest, and the highest, himself shall establish her, himself shall establish her, the Lord shall count, the Lord shall count. When he writeth, when he writeth upon people, upon the people, that this man, that this man, was born there, was born there. Selah, Selah. 
as we the singers, as, as we the, the singers, singers, as well the singers, as well, well the singers, singers, as the players, as the players, players on instruments, on instruments, instruments shall be there, shall be there. All my springs, all my springs are in thee, are in thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 I will now, uh, we will now pray um, as the blessings of Aaron upon the children of Israel. Hallelujah!
Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. 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 Shema. Shema. Yahweh. Yahweh. Shalanu. Shalanu. Tafila. Tafila. Avkusha. 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 Hallelujah. 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 All praise. Hallelujah. All praise. Oh, Yahweh, we thank you again so much, Father, for another Shabbat, Father, another day of ceasing. Father, we thank you so much that we get to enter into your rest by way of your, your Ruach HaKodesh. We thank you for inviting us into your presence. Father, you said with two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in our midst. Father, we hope that our hearts being prepared and getting all of the burdens off our chest and off our minds, Father. We have made a pleasant abode for you in our midst, O Yah. You are the king. Enter in, O Yah. Come in our presence, O Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We invite you, Father. We invite you not only into the doors of our heart, Father, but in all our being, Father. Come in and make your abode. Set your throne up in our minds, O Father. Be king over our thoughts. Be king over our actions and deeds, Father. We lay down our own will even at your feet, O Yah, knowing that you are our sovereign one. We thank you so much, Father, for the spirit of unity. We thank you for the spirit of peace and shalom. Father, we ask you, Father, that you send your shalom throughout all of the 12 tribes scattered abroad, Father. Yeah. Even though we are in a tumultuous time, Father, where there are questions about what is going on among Israel, Father. We know, Father, that you are able to keep us and secure us in every way, Father. We know that all that you have given to Hamashiach, he will not lose one, oh, Father. Hallelujah. We know that he is faithful. We know that he is faithful, and it is by his name that we are have received redemption. There is no other name in heaven nor on earth, Father, in which a man can be redeemed. So we thank you so much, O oh Yah. We thank you so much, Father. That's all we can give you is thanksgiving, Father. What, what else can we give you but thanks, thanks, and, thanks and free will offerings of thanksgiving, O oh Yah? Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, O oh Yah. Thank you, Allah. For giving us the tongue to praise you with, Father, to magnify you with, to exalt you with, O oh God. We thank you, Father. We hold no man guilty in our hearts, Father. We forgive every, every brother of any debt, Father. And Father, we ask, Father, that if any way in any means we have offended any of our brethren, O oh God, we ask you for forgiveness. And Father, we ask that Please, you, Father, you will redeem. And you will repair any breach that have been made, Father, among us, or among the tribes of Israel. Please, O oh Yah, we want to live at we want to live peacefully with all men, if possible. Father. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Yah. Hallelujah, Father. We want to live peacefully with all men, if possible. So we thank you, Father. We thank you. It's by your Spirit that we are jointly fit together. Father, we ask you we send a spirit of wisdom even among the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. We will need it like never before, Father. We ask that you send tacticians out among the tribes of Israel, Father. We, are. You will send wise men, Father, in the midst of Israel, Father. Send ye your prophets, O Father, that we will have, we will be guided by the unctioning of your spirit through them, Father. Please, Father. Please, Father, we need you like never before. Even as our enemies are mounting up an attack, even against o Israel, your, your bride, Father, mm -hmm. we ask you, Father, that you will keep in every, each and every one of us, and you will strengthen all of us who will have to endure some kind of persecution, Father. Let them have a bear a good record among the saints who have given their lives before us, Father. Let their lives be a testimony of strength unto us, Father. We know that the blood of the righteous cries out unto you. So, Father, we, we right now, our prayers and our petitions, hopefully, Father, are coming up to you as a sweet savior. And that you will not hear smell, 
the stench of sin in our mentionings of you, O oh Father. Oh, yeah. We thank you again, O oh Yah. We can't thank you enough. Oh, and we ask that you word not only the mouth of your servant, Mikael, but, Father, that you will word his mind, Father. Let him not be under his own volition. Let him not be under his own will. But let him be literally prostrate to you and by way of the Spirit as you use his mouth, mind, and heart to give out your word. And we ask you all these things in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our kinsman redeemer, our king, our savior, our chief shepherd, and our great petitioner. He who sits at your right hand petition us, petitioning for us day and night. We thank you, O oh Yah. Hallelujah. 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 All praise. Okay, now be seated. Shalom, shalom, family. Shalom, shalom. We're back again with another live lesson from Akab Maku Ministries located in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and we hope and we pray for all our brothers and sisters um, who are seeking the most high sincerity and truth that you all may have a blessed and fruitful Shabbat. Um, as we close out, um, the Feast of Dedication. Um, like we talked about last week, we will be discussing how we actually dedicate ourselves, which literally we are the temple, back to HaMashiach. And so with that comes uh, a cleansing. With that comes a purging. Like we was talking about dead season. We was talking about being in dead season. During the dead season, a lot of times you reevaluate. Uh, you reaffirm. And you purge out anything that is of dead weight or no use. And so we're going to go to towards the ending of the Maccabean revolt once they got the temple back. And we're going to we're going we're going to bring it we're going to bring a full circle on how we are the temple being cleansed. And it's just certain vessels within the temple that we defiled, defiled by the Gentiles that are just no longer in use. And so we being that temple are part of those vessels, we have to make sure that we are not that that uh that unworthy vessel or too tainted uh uh, uh part of the, the temple. Okay? Okay. And so we're gonna go through that today. And I wanna start in First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twenty-seven. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twenty-seven. Ready? This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Start over, call it out, be direct, be confident, and confirm what you call it now. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Uh-huh. Now you got the body of Mashiach and members in particular. They so said, now ye, all of us in this room, are the body of Mashiach. And we are members in particular. What does that mean? We are members in particular. So that means he, he's pointing out that we are, yes. What's the verse? Uh, verse 27. We are members in particular of the body of Mashiach. What's another word for member? Part of. Part of or vessel. And so that was one of the things uh, that were needed to be in the temple to make the temple what? What was the point of the vessels? Function. It was a purpose for but what, what was that purpose? They did fill them with oil. The purpose of the vessels was to bring light into the temple. It was to bring light into the temple. And we, understanding now that we don't have that physical temple, our bodies and our minds and our spirits are the temples that's supposed to be where the Mashiach or the Father should be able to reside. So when you understand the temple, you had the, the courtyard, right? You had the holy place, and you had what? You had the courtyard, you had the holy place, and then you had what? It was three parts to the temple. 
courtyard, holy place, then what? Holy of holies. The holy of holies. And so when we look at that perspective of our bodies, what would be the holiest of holies for the Father? Your mind. Your mind, your mind would be that altar he sits upon. Right? And so what does that mean about our mind? Huh? You can't think any wicked. Because guess what? Once, once when the first tabernacle we built, once we defiled the tabernacle, what did what did the father do? Huh? He left. Okay. He left. And the heathen will come in. And the heathen will come in. And so put that in perspective of your mind. When you are infiltrated by evil thoughts, ways, or customs. When you have those things in your mind, you have now made the father have to leave because he cannot be around anything unclean. Is that what a reprobate mind is? A reprobate mind. That's what that means? Mm -hmm. One who can't turn from their own ways. And that's a lot of the things in our, our, our community. So we, being the temple, being the vessels or members of the body, have to clean the temple. And that's in all aspects of your life. And I'm even talking about food too. Because even the food that we eat, even the food that we eat have chemicals released that release to our body and that can go to our mind. And so, am I saying you're going to eat the cleanest food? Definitely not dealing with America, even if you're vegan. You're not going to have the cleanest food. But can you start preparing or, or at least getting your body to as clean as it can be? Yeah. And so you got to look at that in all aspects of your life. Your mind, body, and soul. We have to live holistically. And because we are the temple. And again, remember the Father said what? Holy cannot mix with what? And righteousness cannot mix with what? And so that means it's going to be a cause of separation. Purging. We have to go through. In our own lives and even people around us. That for us to get to that place where the Father can reside in us, we must purge and then cleanse. Just like uh, uh, when you want to start living a, uh, a diet, most people don't know. Before you really start doing a diet, you have to actually clean your body so the diet can work. A lot of us go into diets still having the same filthiness and wondering why even when we start having diets, we got headaches, first five days, we feeling woozy. Because you didn't take the proper steps to first purge and cleanse. And this is what we're going to see, the steps they had to take during the time of Maccabees. Before they could start actually putting the righteous gifts and vessels, they had to first purge and cleanse. And they had one thing they had to do, particularly they had to have the right people to do it. This goes back to our conversation before this, this started. You, be, you, happy, you better be happy that you got the right people around you to help clean your mess. See, when we come together, it should not be you coming for us to clean your mess. You should actually get your stuff clean so you can add on to what we already got going on. You see? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. First Corinthians 3 and 16. So we are the vessels that are supposed to be put in the temple or another where it could be of the body of Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so with vessels, again, a vessel is supposed to be to decorate and to shine. You're supposed to be the very vessel that illuminates the temple, which is the body, which the body is the kingdom. You understand? And so this is where this purging starts to happen. And the crazy thing about it, either you purge, you, 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 you take the steps to purge what you need to, or the Father will literally remove you and replace you with another vessel. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Come on. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that you Slow are down. The... Uh, slow down. Take a deep breath. Say it loud and confident. Come on. Yeah. Know ye not that you are the temple of Elohim and the spirit of Elohim dwell in you. Know ye not that you are the temple. See, this is what we got to understand. And this is where our ancestors fell at. They had the law. But for some reason, they could not obtain the spirit of the law. You see? Because they did, not, they did not first understand that we are the actual spiritual tabernacle. 
So they tried to put life into the tabernacle where they didn't even have it themselves. You understand? And so y'all have to first understand before trying to unify and, and come together, we must first see the temple within ourselves. <laughs> We must first see the tabernacle in the body or a piece of the body of Mashiach within us. It's the reason that the Father was very specific on saying we all all have one part. That means what? That obviously for us to build the temple, we must come together. But if you're a defiled vessel, you won't even, the Father won't even allow you to be around people. You understand? So it's best that you clean yourself up. You have to make that decision and believe that it can happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read that again. Know ye not that you are the temple of Elohim and the spirit of Elohim dwells in you. Keep going. If any man defile the temple of Elohim. Come on, speak louder. Uh, come on. If any man defile the temple of Elohim, him shall God destroy. Hold family. on. If any man defile the temple of Elohim, him shall the Father destroy. Y'all see that? The Father's not going to allow you to come into the temple and destroy it with your foolishness. He's going to remove you and destroy you before you let that happen. So before you get, before you bring your mess to people, make sure your mess is cleaned up. You understand? You are all vessels in the temple. The Father will not put you in a position where you're around people where you can destroy. So what does that tell us about our situation here? That obviously we were meant to come together. And obviously y'all have made a choice to clean up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So therefore, as Elder was speaking earlier, we have to trust in each other that we're doing our due diligence outside of each other. So we represent each other once we leave this place. And so each and every day, everybody should be working on their craft and working on becoming a better man, not for themselves, but for the body in the temple. We can't do this thing without each other. You understand? Oh, yeah. You can't. But you will be purged if you don't want to make that choice, though. So you are the, the temple of Mashiach. The Mashiach resides in you if you allow him to. See, this is the thing. And we accept that we want to be clean. And work to be clean. The beautiful thing about Mashiach is he will do the rest. He will do the rest. What do you think that place he's preparing? He's preparing for those vessels to come together and shine light on that mansion. To shine light on the kingdom. That's why he said you all are the light of the world. A city set on the hill. You understand? So don't take this lightly and just think you're a Hebrew Israelite. No. You ultimately are called to be light, not a Hebrew Israelite. You ultimately, I'm not saying that's what you're supposed to identify as. I'm saying you ultimately are called to be a light. And you know the crazy thing is, for those who don't agree, guess who he uses when you don't want to do your job? He uses the Gentiles. Facts. Oh, you don't want to do it? You don't think you're supposed to be light? You think he stops a Hebrew Israelite? No, I'm going to show you, but I can tell you that somebody going to be the light of my kingdom. So y'all got a choice. <laughs> Either be that light and clean up or be replaced by a Gentile. Straight like that. Big facts. Straight like that. You can feel some type of way all you want, but you will be replaced by a Gentile. Is it not it right? Who did he use to provoke Israel? Gentiles. Who did he say had greater faith than Israel? Gentiles. Who also would be, be, be bound to knee according to Revelation 18? Gentiles. See, we too focused on Gentiles not realizing judgment first comes to the Jew. Then to the Gentile. And Israel be feeling some type of way when brothers say that, but the writings don't lie. You will be either replaced or exalted to a higher position. You, but the thing, crazy thing is, like we talked about earlier, the father don't pull you. He allows you to make a choice. 
So if you if you get in a uh, you just keep getting in situations and and you and you you can't really figure out how to balance this walking. You just struggling. It's because you made a choice before even getting to that point or why you're there. Okay. If you have not felt the Holy Spirit the minute you came in this truth, it's because you not you have not let go of the world. And this is what we were discussing before. This is the problem with Lot's wife. She didn't want to let go of her past life. She did not want to let go. Therefore, she turned it in dust and salt. And that's what some of our spirits still look like, dust and salt. When you're supposed to be illuminated light, you're supposed to be a, a, a light being, an energy. That no matter if it's, if it's evil people around you or good people, they still know you are light. And if people still got question after dealing with you, that means it's something about you that needs to be worked on. Because everybody bear witness, even Satan. We prayed before we got on this live and said, what? Well, the Father has given us all authority over Satan. And his kingdom and those who work for him. That's the type of power all y'all got. You just got to be in the right spirit or vessel to release it. And that's including women too. You have that power. But before you get that power, you must first cleanse. A car never starts unless its engine is clean first. It's going to wheeze its way through until it turns off. It until it turns off, making that little, <clears throat> that little weird noise. Mm -hmm. it's gonna be and you sitting there wondering why that joint jiggling. <laughs> then it just died on you. I done been here before. <laughs> <laughs> and it died on you. Because you, not have, you have not taken the proper steps to clean it. And that's the same thing with y'all bodies. Y'all, it ain't your body. You are a spirit first. Your body is just a vessel. Just like a car. You see the, the, the nice, pretty car, but it's the engine that makes it alive. Your spirit makes your vessel alive. And so you got to be able to clean your spirit in all levels. Mentally, spiritually, and physically. If you're not doing that, you will become a defiled vessel. And you'll be wiped away in place. Okay? okay? So read that again. Verse 16 and 17. Know ye not that you are the temple of Elohim and that the spirit of God dwell in you. Dang. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Mm. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So the temple of Elohim is holy, which you are called to be. Now you have the choice if you're going to be chosen or not. But you are called to be a holy temple. Israel was called to be a holy nation unto him. Not defiled by, by imagination or, or custom or system or people. You were called to be set apart. A lot of us just keep holding on by a thread to this system, man. But we'll sit here and fix our mouth and say this system is wicked. But still holding on to it. I hear this, this shit wicked as hell, man. I know, man. This is this destroyed our people 400 years. Yeah, you still holding on. You still holding on to it. Huh? You have a choice. Angel told Lot, don't look back. He's telling y'all the same thing. Don't look back. How many people here look back a couple times? Be honest. Be honest. We don't all look back. We all did. <laughs> That's the beauty of Mashiach. That's why you owe him your temple. Because you're supposed to be dead. You're supposed to be dead, all right? You look back. You saw the truth the whole time and still look back. We're supposed to be dead, sis. By Shimmy Hoshu and Mashiach, we still alive. That's the only reason. And don't take his grace and mercy lightly because he will remember every idle word and every idle deed. And you won't have to pay regardless. You know why? Because you know the truth. You know, you're going to have to suffer more than those who are in the world. That's crazy, ain't it? You who chose to do evil, knowing it was evil, and still did evil, and fixed in your mind to think it was good, you will be worse than those who don't know and do evil ignorantly. You got a choice. You were literally called to be something greater than you were before. 
And if you still acting like a nigga, bro. A nigga like. A nigga like. A Hebrew bugger like. A jigger boy, whatever you want to call it. You ain't no different than no in the world. The only different is you got fringes, ZZs, a head wrap, blind earrings, and you say, Shallow Wamas thou. Spirit dead. That's it. That's the only difference. It starts with the inward man. I was reading that the other day in the, in the, in the, in the uh, in Mark, I'm sure I was describing the long zeet zeets, the long prayers. I'm like, ooh, let me minimize my prayers now. <laughs> I was like, man, he's like, cut me. They walking around, praying in the street and all that other stuff. You just got to read. He gave us the indicator to look at Pharisees and Sadducees without having to say it. And to make sure that you knew what not to be. You see? Because we be too focused, I promise we be, and I, and, and I really realized it this year. By the way, Elder, by the way. I'll be like, man, I remember I was like, man, why you, why you be wearing your fringes, man? Why don't you like that? If you ain't clean on this side, what's the point? <laughs> and I was offended. <laughs> like, what you mean? Like, we, we commanded to wear them. But he first commanded us to have what? A whole heart, mind, and soul to him. Before he commanded us to wear fringes, that was the first thing he said. You see? And so it took me to really just kind of sit back and just think about this thing. Hey, man, clear it, clear, clear it though. I go by my friend, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got them on now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I had to really think about that thing, man. Like, damn, what do these things really mean if I ain't clean on the inside? You know what I'm saying? Because all they do is convict me more when I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all they here for. Sitting there just looking at it. God damn. <laughs> Some of you guys be tucking our, our ZTs and going, but nobody can go do something. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I can be straight. I done did that before. No, I'm about to do something. <laughs> the slut sat there and, and took off my ZZ. Oh, no. I, ain't gonna, I, I can look at these things. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'll be, I'll be honest with y'all. I done did it before. Then tucked the fringes and the hoodies, zipped it up real tight. You know what I'm saying? No one all about to go get lit in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just to be honest. Be honest. Scripture say what? Confess your faults. I can be honest with y'all. I didn't did it. I don't do it no more. I didn't did it before. All praise the most I ain't dead. Oh, yeah. But I ain't dead. You feel me? I, I got a question. Uh -huh. Did those fringes stop you from going in, or is it the fringes on your heart that stop you from doing it? It was the fringes on my heart. I, I had the fringes on my heart. You know what I'm saying? The fringes are just there. I'm just looking at them. <laughs> Damn. Let me go ahead and tuck these joints real quick. <laughs> One, I don't want to be identified. <laughs> and two, I don't want to look at these while I'm doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, man. Look, man, look. I'm not ashamed to admit my fault. Right. I didn't did it before. We all did something. Some of y'all probably didn't had the fringes on, kept them out, and still did it wrong. <laughs> Some of y'all probably committed adultery with the fringes on. Whoa, whoa, slow down. Slow down. What you mean, slow down? That joint is real. That's a fact. The Pharisees tried to come to the Messiah talking about this man, woman to commit adultery. He said, him who has not sent cast the first stone. They all had long ass ZCs on to drop that stone. <laughs> <laughs> They dropped that stone, didn't they? Let's be real. These were yes. scholar people, man. Get yeah, them out. These were scholars. <laughs> and you see the same thing going on today. Same thing. Yeah, I done seen three brothers talk about women wearing pants and all that. And then be commenting on the sister picture. <laughs> and she ain't got nothing on. <laughs> but this is one of the most... Uh, holiest and, and, and righteous Hebrews in the world. Be honest. I done seen it. I done done it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's real. Like, we gotta, this is where, what you say? You, you confess it with your mouth. 
then it shall be released. We got to be honest, man. That's the thing about it. The thing is, it's not the sin that gets you in trouble. It's when you don't want to admit it. Right. Just admit it. It will actually do you better. You ain't got to walk around with a heavy heart. All paranoid looking behind your shoulder for the dark angels. <laughs> trying to find out who saw you. Trying to convince yourself. Oh, because nobody saw me. I'm good. Twisting the scripture. Now I know I'm in the most darkest place in the world. The most highs was right there shining bright. Why you did it? Your angel that's right next to you right now and everything you did. Y'all can't fool the most high, man. He can't even fool himself. Facts. Straight up. So we got to stop convincing ourselves that we can get away with stuff, man. I know I didn't try to do it before. Just say, oh, I'm good, man. Maybe, maybe one time. Maybe one time I would be good. Yeah, a week later, I got whooped. Shit, my wife started tripping out of nowhere. I'm just like... Damn, that was quick. <laughs> Damn, that was quick. <laughs> I'm being honest with you, man. We got to be straight up, man. Brothers, don't be trying to be honest with yourself. Look, the thing is, if you ain't going to admit it, he going to make he gonna go through your wife to make you admit it. Okay. Then be ready to put her away because you want to yeah. put her away the truth. Oh, she's rebellious. <laughs> no, bro, she got a spirit on her eating your ass alive. <laughs> you can't handle it. Just be honest. So we gotta we gotta clean the temple up. But the first thing before cleaning the temple, you have to first what? Believe it can be clean. Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. <clears throat> I read this the other day. I told my wife, soon I got there, I said, look. I said, what I said? I said, we got the power. We really got power, I right? Do you believe you got power? Okay. Right, you believe you got power? What about you, said? You believe you got power? got power? We got power. I'm about to show y'all right here. It first starts with a belief in your mind. You have to believe in your mind it can happen. You have to believe in your mind you can be healed. And it shall happen. Watch this. Mark 11, 24. This is the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. And the disciples were astonished at his words. Mark 11, verse 24. That's right. Speak up a little bit too. This is the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things... Actually, every... start, start at verse 23. Uh, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. And shall not what? Doubt in his heart. Shall not what? Doubt in his heart. Shall not what? Doubt in his heart. Come on. But shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass. So it first start with you believing and have no doubt in your heart that it can happen. The smallest doubt leaves room for error. The smallest doubt leaves room forever. You have to believe that you can be healed. You have to believe that you can accomplish something that everybody's telling you you can't do. You should have no doubt in your heart. Because when you believe and have no doubt, everything you say shall come to pass. He said if you open your mouth and tell this mountain to move itself and go into the sea, it shall come to pass. Do you believe that? Okay. Hey, look, I'm telling you something. Most high moved my mind to a whole nother shift. Everything I thought was couldn't happen has been happening. It took for me to humble myself to start seeing it. You understand? Okay. I mean, really. I had to humble myself and be open-hearted to see what was true. But you got to believe that all y'all... You have to believe that things can happen in your life and be confirmed and affirmed by what you're saying through the power of Hamashiach and your father that it can happen. See, when we don't understand, when we have doubt in our heart, we, we, we truly got doubt in the father. You have doubt in the father when you have doubt in your heart. Because he said through him all things are what? And through him nothing is what? Impossible. 
Do you believe the words that we read or no? And it comes when stuff starts to really happen in your life. Then we're going to see if you really believe. Okay. Then we'll see if you really believe. So the first step to becoming that useful vessel and, and wanting to be and, and wanting to be clean is you have to believe you can be clean and you can be healed. I firmly believe in this life a man can be perfect. I firmly believe that. Am I talking perfect like 10 for 10? No, I'm talking about perfectly assimilated to the Father. Hallelujah. You know why? Because we have evidence of a man doing it. And I ain't talking about Mashiach. I'm talking about Abraham. I'm talking about Noah. Huh? I'm talking about Enoch. But they were perfect in their generation. <clears throat> Who else I miss? Joe. Dawid. Dawid. <clears throat> it's about being perfectly assimilated to the Father's will. That's what perfect is. I believe men can be perfect. Women can be perfect. If you believe, you can. That's why he said, he that believeth on the name. Belief is not just by word, it's by action. Okay? That's why you got to have the spirit of the law to do the law. You got to believe that what you're doing here, keeping the Sabbath, keeping the Holy Day, being good to people, is what helps you get in the kingdom because your faith is a witness to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep going. And shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Uh -huh. Therefore I say unto you, what things ever ye desire when ye pray. So what things ever you desire I, when you pray, what? Believe that you receive them. Believe that you can receive them. You understand? Okay. Come on. And ye, sh and ye shall have them. And ye shall have He He made it perfect for it. He gave us the formula. I, brothers, sisters, children. He gave us the formula on how to get what we want. But we first, and I just talked to my children about this. You first must do what you ask first. Uh, you ask uh, uh, first. <laughs> you got to do what he asks you to do first. Then everything you want and desire shall be given to you. Seek ye first. Seek ye first what? The kingdom of Shammai. And what is the father saying in that? Seek him first. Meaning if I'm seeking, I'm looking to do something. I'm looking to do what I need to do to get the kingdom. Because I know once I have, I'm on that path, I will receive the kingdom first. Where? Within myself. Okay? Then your motives will be, your motives will be directed by the kingdom mm -hmm. and not your own will. So you're not going to be asking anything mm -hmm. from the father that's not in agreement with his will already. Okay? And they get to the point where you ain't got to summon the Holy Spirit because it's already on you every day you wake up. By just touching people, praying over people. You will no longer need to, to summon it. It will be on you. Like, you. like a Yahukanah named Mercer. It was on that man <laughs> out the womb. It was on that man out the womb. That boy preaching today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go John, John 1 and, uh, 1 and 12. John 1 what? 12. <laughs> Y'all don't listen to Elder. Great. Great. <laughs> John 1 and 12. This is the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12. Uh -huh. But as many as received him, to, to them gave he power. What did he say? As many as received him. What is it to receive Mashiach? Accept. In what way? Belief. Belief? What else? Yeah, our action. Belief in action. To receive him means you are taking on the tax that he has asked you to do. And what did he do to, to those who received him? What happened? To them gave he power to become the sons of Elohim. Oh, so once you accept the terms of a servant and do them, you then become a son. See, we think we sons of Elohim already. No, we're not. We are servants first. We receive the adoption. We are servants. We are servants first. And then we become sons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Read it from the top. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, mm. even to them that believe on his name, mm. which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, 
nor the will of man, but of God. But of Elohim. Hallelujah. Hey, Let's go to Acts 13 and 39. You yes, said, I'm. You said, uh, first John or John? John. That was John. St. John chapter 1, verse 12. Now we're oh, in okay. Acts 13 and 39. Um, yeah, Acts 13 and 39. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 39. Uh -huh. And by him all ye believe are justified from all. Hold people. on, he said, by him all ye that believed are what? Are justified. What does justified mean? Huh? <coughs> what does justified mean? Typically it means to, to, to have justice. So what he's saying is he's going to vouch for you. So those that believe the Father, the Mashiach, vouches for you. Come on. And what he said, for what? From what? From all things. From all things. From persecution, from people murmuring about you, from people going against you. He will justify you. Did it say man shall justify him? No. It said he will justify you. He will rise up for you. Because you have believed on him by your actions. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. It's your actions that show your belief. You understand? Okay. Read from the top again. And by him all ye believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moshe. What does that mean? See, people read this verse right here and take the law, they take the law, they think that, that scripture take the law out of out of place. They read that and think, oh, okay, look at this verse right here. It says which ye could not be justified by the law of men. Oh, see, you think you're keeping the laws that you justify. No, you have to have the spirit in order to be justified, which is in the law. You understand? You can't have just the law. You got to have the spirit of the law plus the law. Hallelujah. So when people try to hit you with that, that's what you understand and say. You have to have the spirit of the law, meaning you have to want to do it. Genuinely and sincerely. Because people just do it just, it's just like school. I got to go to school. I got I got to go to class. I got to do my homework. Right. I don't really want to do it, but I got to do it. Facts. Those are right? works. That's works. That's works. That's why I said faith without works is dead. This is why people, Christians, or even those in Israel trying to teach you ain't got to keep the law, can't explain what the, what the works is. How you gonna have faith without works? And I, and I, I asked them before. Okay, if we ain't supposed to do the law, and the scripture according to the New Testament that you just believe in only says faith without works is dead, then what are the works? They sit there like, oh, I mean, uh, uh, works. No. <laughs> what is works? What's the works? This is why they can't answer this because they don't even understand the letter. They don't even understand the gospel. They just try to find an excuse not to keep the law. You know what I'm saying? And you got people who are gung ho and keeping the law, but don't really want to keep the law. It's balance to it. That was the purpose of the New Testament. The New Testament is the spirit of the law, and the Torah is the law, the letter of the law. You can't have one without the other. This is why Old Testament keepers can't debunk the New Testament, really. Because you'll never see the, the Mashiach going against the God's word, ever. The only reason he said. You've heard before, uh, bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. But I say unto you, bless those who curse you, is because we lost the love of the law. And he had to restore the love back in us so that we can keep the law in sincerity and truth. This lesson on something totally different. Yes, yeah, that you are breaking Just saying the spirit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's the truth. You gotta have both. You can't have one without the other. Yes, sir. And as far as works go, um, Revelations uh, chapter twenty, verse twelve says that I'm paraphrasing: uh, the dead will be judged by their works. Simple. Verse thirteen says it as well. Okay. So let's get to it. First step is believe. We got that understood. You have to believe. You have to believe that you can be cleansed. You have to believe that you can be saved. 
You have to believe that you have the power within you that the Father has already told you you have inherited. You understand? Y'all have inherited this power, this power before you hit earth. Y'all have inherited the power of Elohim before you hit earth. Do you understand that? Because first of all, you were first spirit before flesh. So something in you is working like we all so-called avatars. Which is working in these vessels in this, in this atmosphere or realm for the time being. Until we can be at the side of our, or at the, at, at the, 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 at the hem of our Father's garment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's see the second step. The second step is cleansing and purging. First step is believing that you can. The second step is is being able to cleanse and purge. Hallelujah. So let's go to 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 41. 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 30, 41. <clears throat> First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 41. Say it one more time. First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 41. <clears throat> First Maccabees chapter 4 verse 41. Mm -hmm. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those. So now we finally got the temple back. We finally have received the temple back. And now we must cleanse the temple and purge the temple before putting the vessels back in the temple. So Judah Maccabees is now looking for a certain type of men to help with this. Come on. To fight against those that were in the fortress. Uh -huh. Until he had cleansed, cleansed the Sanctuary. So obviously he's looking for certain men that's able to protect the people, or in this case the temple, oh, yeah. while it is being cleansed. So now we're looking for so-called watchmen. Who's going to be the watchman of Israel? Who's going to watch over the people while we're purging ourselves? And this is the point of we we so focused on the heathen, we ain't watching the doors. We ain't watching the doors. We ain't watching the gates. And this is why people fall out the truth, because we ain't watching the gates. We sitting there walking around the corner seeing what that noise was, letting the enemy come right in. That's what they can do what they what they did in uh what was that uh uh New Jersey. Ain't nobody watching the gates for us. Ain't nobody protecting us the way we should be protecting us, brothers. Come on. Verse 42. So he chose priests of blameless. Oh, blameless what? Conversation. Mm, so these men are already have been refined. It's important, which is why we need righteous elders. One who have already went through the situations and, 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 and is leading us in the path that Mashiach will have us go. So we need righteous eldership who are blameless in conversation, not trying to deceive the people. Come on. Such had pleasure in the law. Who has such pleasure in keeping the law as it is written. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Who cleansed the sanctuary and bear out the defiled stones mm. into an unclean place. Mm. So who cleansed the sanctuary, who bore out the defiled stone unto clean places. So what does that mean? We have What is the stones in our temple right now? Dead weight. What is dead weight? People that ain't working or helping. In ourselves, though. Oh. We are the temple, right? Right. Casting down thoughts, imaginations. Typically, thoughts that we have got from the heathen. That's first and foremost. Those also represent doctrine. Doctrine. Casting out customs. Casting out sometimes even the way our parents grew us up. Facts. Not to blame our parents, but they only knew what they knew based upon how they were raised. But some of us value our parents' opinion so much, even when it comes to truth, that we put their word above themselves. So we got to be able to remove that thought and to remove that custom and to remove all evidence of heathenistic thinking so that we can be used. <laughs> so
So we got to remove the, the foul stones and clean house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. What did you... What did you um, uh, okay, thank you. Um, you, you stones, uh, doctrine, stones could be stones could be doctrine. Heaven, I mean, thoughts of heathen, heathenistic thoughts, and Custom. customs. Um, it could be it could be uh, doctrines. He said, and it could even be um, how we were raised. Second we Corinthians, what? Chapter seven, verse one. Oh, it, 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 it can even include the foods that we eat. Oh, yeah. The foods that we eat. Because the, the food gives you the, the very, it feeds your cells, which your cells give you the very thoughts. You know what I'm saying? It gives you the very thoughts that you need. So even the food that we eat can be something that we have to look at and be able to remove. Why are we the highest in diabetes? Why are we the highest in uh, uh, cholesterol, high blood pressure, colon blocks, cancer? Why do they keep dubbing us as as as, as, as LD and, and, and what's the other one? Um, ADHD is it, what we're putting in our bodies. Second Corinthians chapter seven verse one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Hold on, we, he told you. You already got the promises. You are the beloved of the Most High. You already got the promises. But he tells you, you must, he said, let us clean ourselves. And this day the Father clean us. He said, you clean yourself. You clean yourself. Come on. Let us clean ourselves from, from what? all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Oh, so it said flesh and spirit. Some of us we can look like and on the outside, on the flesh that we good, but our spirit is still holding on to things. Thanks. So the father said, you got the promise, but you got to clean yourself first. You got to remove any type of infirmities and iniquities so that I can, I can do a good work in you. That's what you got to do. That's your mission. That's your duty. It ain't my mission or my duty. That's your mission to do and once you do that, then we can suck. Come on. Perfecting holiness. Perfecting what? Perfecting holiness. Now, nah, this is where the perfecting starts. Once you clean your temple and understand that you get these promises, then the perfecting of what? In the fear of God. So the perfecting of holiness in the fear of Elohim, which now, which we understand the fear of Elohim is what? Keeping what? Commandments. Keeping the commandments. So he's telling you, you got to first clean your spirit. To even keep the law. You got to first cleanse yourself from flesh and spirit to even keep the law. And through keeping the law, you then receive your promises. Because remember, the promises didn't start in the New Testament. It started with Abraham. You understand? It was a short thing with Abraham. Then it became a short thing with Isaac. Then it most definitely became a short thing with Jacob. So before, for you to go back to the beginning of when I made these covenants, you must first cleanse yourself from all the captivities you've been through. You got to cleanse yourself. And this is why we actually got mercy and grace. So we have that time to cleanse. Because remember, we went over what grace was, right? Mm -hmm. Grace is a time to get your stuff together. Why, why waste idle time where you can actually start receiving these blessings now? You're only in captivity if you make your mind to say you're in captivity. That's why we keep saying it over and over, we in captivity. You have, you have convinced your mind that you're in captivity. But the scripture told me, my Messiah told me, if I accept the truth, I shall be free. So, who am I going to listen to, you or, or the Messiah? You tell me I'm in captivity, but the Messiah said, once I accept the truth and do the truth, I'm free. She said, do I got to wait 400 years for that? Do I got to wait till next year, I... No, we can do it right now. If you so choose to stand for it and believe it. Huh? I'd rather be in bondage to him than to my own sin. I'd rather take his yoke than the yoke of my oppressor. Shoot, kill me. 
Release me from this body. Period. Understand you have that power to do that if you so choose to accept it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Yeah, this ain't going to be no long, John. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Hallelujah. You said 21? 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Now watch this. This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself... Let's take our time with this. If a man therefore purge himself... Come on. From these... He shall be a vessel unto honor, Ooh. sanctified, and meet for the master's use. Oh, man. Now, that sounds like something you got to take upon yourself to do. That sounds like a decision you got to make. You can't keep blaming the most hot for your circumstances. A lot of y'all choosing it. A lot of y'all choosing to be sick. A lot of y'all choosing to have headaches. A lot of y'all choosing to be disease filled. A lot of y'all choosing to be in captivity. A lot of y'all choosing to be broke and in poverty. The most high ain't come with, he ain't tell us to be broke. He ain't tell us to be in poverty. He never said that. Huh? He said we was rich. First in the spirit. First in the spirit. If your circumstance is broke because your spirit broke. Period. You have to purge yourself so you can start receiving this honor as a vessel and then you can be sanctified and then be of good use to your master. Hallelujah. Cleanse yourself. Be of good use. And your reward shall be great. Finish that off. Read from the top again. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use and prepared Unto every good work. And he said, and prepare to every good work. How do we keep asking the question while we ain't healing? What are you doing to even heal yourself? Huh? You want to hop from marriage to marriage and blame everybody except you, even the white man, while your marriage ain't work? It's you. It's you why I ain't work. That boy killing me. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta stop. We gotta start running from it. Ain't gonna lie, it hurt to tell the truth about yourself, but at the same time, it feel good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once you get done with the fight, you're like, damn, I made it. I feel good now. It's on my chest. No. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What, what just happened? That was a hand. Oh, man. Yeah, that's it. Oh, man. It feel good. It, it be hurt when you every word you say against yourself. Now you can bear witness to your own crime. But then once you're done, you take that deep breath. <sighs> I'm good now. I made it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the truth. We got to stop running from it. Let the, let the most high use. You don't use the most high. You can't. That's it. Period. 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 You can't use the most high. Stop trying. It won't work. You cannot hide. You cannot run. <laughs> you cannot run from the most high. You can put all the bushes and and, and tree tree wax on you all you want. You can't run. All right, Adam. <laughs> okay. And Adam really thought he could get away with it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He really thought he could get away. He, was he, was hot he convinced himself as he heard the father's voice, if I hide here long enough, right. maybe he'll leave. Right, he was talking to him while he was hidden. Right. And he still thought he was hidden. Like, where you at? I'm, I'm, I'm over here. here. <laughs> we really be trying to convince ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So that's the second step is cleansing and purging. Everybody got that? We go, we go hit and go today. Third step is to be able to be refined and rebuild. To be refined and rebuild. Let's go back to Maccabees chapter 4, verses 40, 46 through 47. First one. First Maccabees chapter four, yeah. verses forty-six to forty-seven. You got that? Okay. One more time, folks. I got people four. in the back. First Maccabees chapter four, verses forty-six to forty-seven.
Let's get it. This is the first book of First Maccabees, chapter four, four verse forty-six. Mm-hmm. And laid upon the stones in the mountain of the temple, in a convenient place, until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar according to the former. So let's break this down. We understand the prophet is who? Huh? It's Mashiach, right? And he said, now, nah, we looking for whole stones. A lot of us be trying to do the works of the father and still be broken. You cannot do that. A lot of us be trying to lead the sheep and still be broken. You cannot do that. A lot of us be trying to lead women and we still got mama issues. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. Because all you doing, not only are you hurting yourself, but now you hurting your sheep. And that's a dangerous thing to do. If you know you're a broken vessel, shut your mouth and learn. And heal. Stop trying to teach people to be seen. Yes, sir. Teach people by how you're being seen, by your work on yourself. You understand? Right. You working on yourself is teaching people. Because the thing is, you make it hard for yourself when you teach. And then, and then people really find out you full of shit. They go, oh, I thought you, I thought you had it down. You sitting there with your lip all hanging down. You going to hide in hibernation. I'm here. You wait about 15 years and you can pop up with another congregation like, and change the whole Hebrew name. And act like you ain't even the same person when you first got in the truth. You just found a bigger fool than yourself. That's it. That's it. And so you have to, before doing the good works and being placed in a temple to refine the temple, you must be refined yourself and put back whole. A lot of us still have issues with our childhood. Let's be honest. A lot of us still have issues with men or women that we dealt with in the past. Let's be honest. And then we come into the truth thinking we feel because I found my identity. All you found out was who you really are and how messed up you are. And you try to convince yourself by teaching others that you're good. Well, you know, it was, a, it was the spirit was put on me to say something. No, it wasn't. You told yourself that. You told yourself that. You told yourself that you was good enough to teach. Not been, not been one person in scripture that risen themselves. It was always other people that rose them up. And so when you start placing yourself in, in the area and, and giving yourself titles, that's how you know it's not in the most high. That's pride. And pride is the beginning of, uh, of man's fall. Facts. Period. So B, you got to learn to heal and be whole before doing anything else. Because it'll help, it'll benefit you. And then when it, once it is time, it'll be a great benefit from those who are going to seek your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's go, let's go to the refining. Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. I know Sirach, my baby book. What's the check, bro? Sirach chapter 2, verse Y'all, y'all waiting. <laughs> <laughs> we be trying to digest the last, yeah. the last verse. Chapter 2, verse 1. I'm trying to digest what you see in that. I know it's a lot, it's a lot of, a lot of meat, man. Oh, it's shaking, man. I'm to take it in. Y'all got it? Okay. Come on, bring it out. Mm. This is Sirach, uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm-hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Okay, so if you're not, you're going to come to serve the Lord. You have to prepare yourself for temptation. But if you're not, you, if you're not all the way there, how can you even prepare for what's to come from a whole, for a whole person? You see what I'm saying? You could not have to be prepared first before the real preparation of being a prophet. Yahushua had to go through things and be immersed first before really getting the preparation of a Messiah and a prophet. You understand? You have to still go through that same process of refinement. So when it is time for that preparation, you will be wholeheartedly so in, in depth into Mashiach that nothing can really tempt you. Nothing can tempt you. 
So he said, if you come, come serve me, prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself? By first, those first steps. Believing you can be prepared or repaired, really. And actually going through the process of cleansing and purging. That's the preparation for the temptation. You must first go through it with yourself first before dealing with any outside source of force. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Set thy heart aright and uh -huh. constantly endure. So now we're going back to the heart. Set, you got to set your heart right. If your heart, if your heart not aright, then how can you endure? How can you go through things in this truth if you, if you didn't even come into this thing in the right heart? You understand? Set your heart aright and constantly what? Endure. 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 Come on. And make haste in time of trouble. And make haste in the time of trouble. Make haste to what? Come on. Clean, cleave unto him and depart not away. Cleave That's unto him and depart not away. So when you get it refined and rebuilt, you're going to go through things, brothers and sisters. You've got to go through things. He got to see if you're the right type of vessel to go into this temple. So he got to run from him, run to him, right? Yeah, run to him. Don't run away. And I'm telling you, another way to run away is when you want to do your own thing and figure out for yourself. That's another way of running away. And that's a lot of our problem. We got too much pride to say, I need help. He's literally created vessels for you to get help, not run away from these vessels to figure out for yourself. So cleave unto him. How do you cleave unto him? By cleaving unto his righteous people. Come on. That thou mayest be increased at the last end. So now he's telling you <laughs> through your refinement, it's just like... And just like going through that process, gold gets to a certain point where it almost can be finished, but it stops right at the point where it's perfectly molded and perfectly refined. So he said at that, at that, he said, stay there at your last and then you shall be increased. Then the good work start to come. You understand? Read that again so you understand. Cleave unto him uh -huh. and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at the last end. So it most of the time, we, we start to really learn our lessons when? At the end. At the end. That's when we at rock bottom and we ain't got nowhere else to go. He said, stay there at that last end and then you shall be increased. Because now you're starting to learn how to deal with actual temptation and issues. The fire, we're not here to run away or, or not have problems. We're actually here to get stronger when we do have problems. Because this, what we're going through this life is going to continue to be like this until the kingdom comes. That's one thing you got to accept. You're not going to be in a life and not have issues. You're going to go through something to the day that you die or Mashiach come. You understand? This whole life is a refining period. This whole life. So there's no one running away from it. You understand? You have to do what you got to do so you can be increased. So when the time come again, when them seven devils come again, you'll be ready to whip their ass. Right. You understand? Y'all understand? Satan ain't got nothing on y'all. You make him bigger than what he is. I'm going to be telling you, 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 give, you give too much credit to the white man. You give too much credit to Satan. He's a weak Negro. He weak. You just give him power in your mind. You understand? You give him too much power. You have power over him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you're going through something, you stay there and you deal with it and you take it and you embrace it and you take it with what? Cheerfulness. Because once it's over, boy, you're going to be smiling like I just said. Once you tell the truth, and it's, I take that deep breath. Everybody take that deep breath. It's over now. I done been through it now. It's done. I made it. I'm actually now better than I was five seconds ago. It's been, it's already been instilled within y'all how to deal with situations and problems. We just choose to ignore it. And some of us even like that shit. Some of us like being depressed. Some of us like being sad. Because yeah, they get sympathy. Place. Right. Mm -hmm. they, they get people to, to, to be a crutch to them. Mm -hmm. They like that attention. Yeah. But then when you really go through some of those same people that you try to get attention from ain't even there. Because they're going to get tired of it. That's why scripture say what? He said, you, you, he said, a friend is only a friend for a time. Because right, once you go through something, that friend ain't there no more. Right. Mm. That's why you got to learn how to deal with your own shit. Excuse my language. 
You got to learn how to deal with your own problems. Because nobody honestly is going to love you besides the father and she act like you love yourself. Let's be clear. Let's be very honest with ourselves. So it's going to take you to be, to, to have the will in your heart to be able to get through this situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep reading up. For gold is tried in the fire. For gold is tried in the fire. And accept, acceptable men in the furnace. And, and acceptable men in the furnace of what? Adversary. Adversity. Adversity. You see? Most I love you when you're going through something. He just want to see if you're going to make it or not. He get, he get that clean praise out of him. Man. That's all he wants. He, want he wants to feel that same love that he give you. Facts. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of the times we, we do it when we, we in situations. When we in situations, that's when we get the most love. Father, if you just take this thing from me. Let this cup pass up over me. Yeah, but she I did it. Yeah, but <laughs> he had it nevertheless. Yeah, but she I said, Father, if it be your will, that if it's any way possible, yeah, let this take pass on. Me. But don't let this be my will, but what? Yo, your will. will. That's, that's the talk. That's the cheerfulness. You got to be able to talk to your father like that and yourself. Right. See, this is the thing. It's all a mind control game. Yeah. It's all a mind game. You convince yourself. Anything is possible. It's like uh, we were just talking about with, with the with the sugar pill. Oh, the placebo effect. The placebo effect, right? Mm -hmm. They tell you it's medicine, although it's just the sugar pill. You'll be healed in three months if you take this for such and such amount of time. And people really came back and said, "I got healed." Didn't tell me I ain't put nothing in there. It's all in the mind. So your healing and refining process is all what you make it. It's all what you make it. You understand? Your mind creates your hell or your heaven. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It creates your, your hell or your heaven. Right. And if you believe the most size in control, then you know he don't mean you no harm. So everything that you're going through is there to refine you like gold. Okay. He's purifying. Mm -hmm. He's getting it out of you. The thing that's really your inward enemies. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That's what he's destroying. Mm -hmm. He's not destroying you. He's destroying what's in you that's against you, out of you. Okay. Preach. Sirach 2121. That boy good. Sirach 2121. Yeah. Watch this. I'm going to show y'all how beautiful y'all could be there most high. Come on. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 21. Learning is unto a wise man. So learning is unto a wise man. So your situations, a wise man will learn from it, not run from it, nor be ashamed of it. But he embraces that moment and he learns from it. What's, what's that saying? The biggest lesson, the biggest lesson you'll receive is by, through life. You'll learn through life lessons. I always tell y'all, I don't take L's. I what? Lessons. I learn lessons. Yeah. <laughs> I don't take L's. I learn lessons. Either I win or I learn a lesson. I don't lose. Why, how could I lose if I had a father on my side? And how could I be losing if I'm still living? Because once you're dead, it's over. It's over. So every day you're really winning. And just someday your, your winning is a little lesser than others. But ultimately, you're winning because you're still alive. Hallelujah. 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 Accept it. Embrace it. You already told us we deserve to be dead. So. Yeah, we should be dead. Blanca, you did. You should be <laughs> dead, man. Sanka. Sanka, whatever his name is. <laughs> you should be dead. You feel me? So be happy, man. Most I love you. Everybody said, most high love you. The most high love, love you. you. That's all y'all got for him? That's how much love y'all? I, I thought y'all be shot to the sky, man. Say, y'all love you. Y'all love you. Y'all love you. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, man, you gotta, I'm trying to tell you, you gotta literally live like that. I know I be getting Ryan's joint screaming. There's no reason. <laughs> I be out here screaming. This is excited. I talk to myself. That's just, just be happy, bro. You say, whoa, shit, I'm with the Father. You think I'm talking to myself. Got my angel right with me. Right, I'm seated in heavenly places right now. <laughs> right, you feel me? I don't even know. I'm going. For real, man, you got to just be, bro. I'm telling you. 
That moment when I was about to die, after I got out through that, bro, bro, I, I enjoy life. I enjoy life, bro, because I could have been finished. And I knew I had some making up to do. <laughs> Before I was gone, I knew I had some making up to do. You know what I'm saying? So be happy in your situation, whether that be bad or good. Because ultimately, even your bad situation is good because you ain't dead. Hallelujah. 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 So, Sirach 21 21 again. Learning is, is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold. Uh, and like a bracelet upon his right arm. Right. And so, you, you wear your experiences with you. And this ultimately will refine you as that ornament of gold in the Father's temple. Hallelujah. So, now we're on the fourth step. Once you. First, first step was what? First step is what? Oh, First step is believing. Second step is what? Cleaning. Cleaning. Cleaning and purging. Cleaning and purging. Third step is what? Uh, refining <laughs> yourself. Refining and rebuilding. Fourth step is being new. Being new. You know what I'm saying? You ever had that? Uh, what, what's some? What's some? It, it was it was old and then got refined and rebuilt and now look brand new. Just like a car. You take a car. You do enough work on it. That boy went from a 2000 to a 2019. Because you took the time to work out the kinks. You took the time to find the right pieces to make this vessel work for you. You took the time to really have compassion and love on this very thing that you built it. And this is, the, this is the same process the Father takes us through. He takes our time with us. This is not a race. This is a marathon. He takes our time. Some of us be trying to rush into positions in these places, and we're not ready. But the good, good thing about the Father, he let you go do it. Just so you can bring your butt right back and say, I told you, son. Yes. I told you, son. Now sit your butt right here. Now let me do my good work. All right, uh, <laughs> let me do my good work. Go ahead. Huh? All right, let's go through the steps. The first step is what? Believe. You have to believe. Second step is what? Huh? Yaquo, what's the second step, Ock? Purge yourself. <laughs> Cleanse and purge. Third step is what? Refine and rebuild. Refine and rebuild. And now the fourth step is being made new. First Maccabees chapter 4, <laughs> verse 48 through th uh, 49. First Maccabees chapter 4, verses 48 through 49. Yeah, chapter four. <clears throat> that up. You forty eight. Yeah, verse forty eight. Uh, mm -hmm. First Maccabees, chapter four, verse forty eight. He made up the sanctuary and the things that were like, and the things that were within the temple and hollowed the courts. They made also new holy vessels and into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offerings and of sin, incense and mm. the table. So let's walk through this. And so they made up the sanctuary, right? And the things that were within the temple, which is what? The vessels. And then they hollowed, they sanctified the courts, which is the covering of those vessels, right? They also made new holy vessels. So what does that mean? We're supposed to come into this truth and be what? A new what? Vessel. Vessel, a new creature, a new man. You understand? Okay. We are the, we go through the same. This is, is this not walking through our process? Okay. This is the same process we have to go through. This is the same process. Remember, it started out with having righteous and blameless men. See? And that's one of the key things we're really missing in our nation is having righteous and blameless men who love the Most High so much that he would not even think to cheat his people. And I believe the Most High is most definitely raising up those men. And we got one in this room. Elder, let's give a man a round of applause. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So we, 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 we're now, we're now in, in the presence of men who actually have that type of heart. That fear the most high so much, as elders say, he feared it so much he cried. 
fearing so much that they would not even think to cheat the Most High's people. Because he know that would be a damnation to his soul. You know what I'm saying? And so now we must become, when we, and when we have such people like that, we also, now it's on us to become new. Because he's given us everything we was praying for before truth. And now we got it. And so now we must become those new creatures so we can be used as he's using the one who is leading and guiding us as a coach shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, it said they made all new holy vessels and in, into the temple, they brought the menorah. So now, who's the menorah? Us. No. Us. Mashiach is the menorah. So now he's telling you, if you believe and believe that you can be cleansed and purged, right? And then you take the steps to be refined and rebuilt to become new. You then now can receive Mashiach within yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is what this is about. Rededicating ourselves back to the Messiah. Back to the Messiah. And so then we have the altar, which takes upon a burnt offering, which is our prayers. And then they go up as a sweet incense unto the Father. And we have the table, which rests and helps the book of life. These are your steps into being refined. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. So, uh, fifth step after after being new is bringing Christ into you. Oh, we ain't on fifth step yet. Oh, okay. We're still in the fourth step. Because once you got Christ, we're going to go into that. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Mashiach, therefore if any man be in Mashiach, what he is a new creature. He is what a new creature. So we it's safe to say if you have not become a new creature, you may not have who in you, Mashiach. Mashiach. And that's a real test you gotta ask yourself. Am I actually made new now? And I ain't talking about fresh. I'm talking about renewed to the point of even the things that was bothering you before or you had issues with won't get to you. Are you now made new now? Come on. Old, old things are passed away. Old things are passed All those things that you had an issue with before, they're passed away. Come on. Behold, all things are become new. Behold, all things through Christ are made new. Are made new. So it's on you if you're going to deny the Messiah or not. You can fix your mouth to say you believe in the Messiah, but if in the inward parts he's not in you, you cannot believe. You cannot believe. And you just as bad as non messianic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take the proper steps, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, it's well worth your life. And you'll receive a hundred manifold and a life to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 5 and 37. Luke chapter 5, verse 37. This is the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 37. Uh-huh. And no man put a new wine into old bottles. So no man gonna put new wine, new wine into old bottles. Come on. Else the new wine will burst the bottles. Right, so now you won't even have a, a perfect balance because new wine can't go into old bottles because it, it, it will explode. It will explode. You understand? So you trying to force truth in yourself and not purge out the old. All you're going to do is fall out the truth. <laughs> That's what happens. Most people fall out the truth because they have not got rid of the old man. Yet they want to know all this knowledge and take all this wisdom and these dark sayings in. And it becomes so much that that old demon inside you can't take it no more. And because you love that demon so much, you leave right with it. That's just the truth. You can fake the funk all you want, but that demon is very, very well alive in you. And it's going to try to flee. question is, is you going to flee with it? So, new wine can't go into old bottles. Come on. And be spilled, and the bottle shall perish. Right, and it's, it ain't say the wine. The wine is the truth. It's the bottle that perishes. 
<laughs> it's the bottle that 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 that, that becomes corrupt and and, 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 and and falls away. It ain't the wine. The wine was good. It was nourished correctly. It was properly proportioned for you to drink it. Because you could not clean yourself and you want to keep that corruptibility and that corruptible mindset and flesh, it was you that went away and fell away. Come on. But new wine must be into new bottles. Read that again. Right. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And both are observed. But new wine must be put into new bottles. So for you to really receive truth, because we could be in the truth, but the truth may not be in us. You understand? We could be in truth, but the truth may not be in us. And so if we're not cleansing ourselves and being renewed as a new man or a new woman and a new creature, then we can never be preserved as a new wine that's coming into us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fifth step. Fifth and last step. Once you have been renewed in that new wine, which is Mashiach now, that menorah that you have within yourself, once you have been renewed, now you, you become the light in the temple of Mashiach. You become the light now in the temple of Hamashiach. So let's go through it again. First step is what? Believe. I need to hear everybody so I can confirm. First step is what? Believe. Second step is what? Cleansing and purging. Let's say it together. Second step is what? Cleansing and purging. Third step is what? Refine and rebuild. Fourth step is what? Being new and whole. Being what? New and whole. Now the fifth step is being the light. The fifth and final step is being the light. Let's go back to 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 50. First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 50. This is the uh, book of 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 50. And upon the altar, they burnt. Start over. Let's get a little louder. And upon the altar, they burnt incense, and the lamps there were upon the ins. What? So like that were upon the candlestick. They light that they might start, give. Start over. Let's go down. And upon the altar, they burnt incense, and the lamps that were upon the candlestick. They lighted. Oh, so now the lamps. You are the lamp. You are that lighted vessel. That is upon the menorah, which is Mashiach. Right? They light it. They light it. Keep going. That they might give light in the temple. That they might give light to the temple. You understand? You are that light. You are that lamp that shines bright. You are that city put upon a hill to shine to the whole world. You are the embodiment the vessel and body part of Hamashiach's temple. Do you understand that? I kind of found something poetic with what Will was saying. Because that uh, said that incense was burned on the altar, right? And we're the lamp of light, right? Mm -hmm. That burning fire, but how you light the incense. So I see it's funny how we're still giving, like literally still giving a sacrifice. I mean, I know the incense are the sacrifice, but what they use to light the incense, that lamp. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. calls us the lamp. Okay. Okay. So, though, before we were connected with the animal that we said gave up, because we had to go throughout the day with them, mm -hmm. we still connect to the incense, because we, that light, are light in the incense. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. And so, we have to understand, you, once you're refined and be made new, you now become that genuine and pure light. You become that genuine and pure light that burns. Right along with the manure. But you got to understand. The Most High said what? You we shall do greater works. Yeah. Right? It's only one manure. But there's many vessels that give light also even to the manure. You understand? It's just like the sun and the moon. Mashiach is the sun. We are the moon. The moon has doesn't have its own light. It reflects off what? The sun. So for, in order for us to reflect on the Mashiach, we must walk and be the embodiment of Mashiach. 
But you cannot do that with a corrupt heart or mind. Even the moon has the white garment to be able to reflect. Oh, yeah. John 2 and 18. John 2 and 18. This is the book of John, chapter 2, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou does, does these things? Yahushua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple. So he said, I'm going to destroy the temple. So what is he really saying in this? I, and I read this. I'm like, ooh, that was cold. I, I, I didn't think about it like that. What was he really saying in this? Destroying the temple, the physical temple. He said, I'm going to destroy the old man in you. I'm going to destroy that old temple that was truly built by man's hands. Like us, we are actually built by man's thoughts and hands. We are built by a corrupt system that is against us, not for us. So he has to first destroy that man in us, and then what? And in three days, I will raise it up. And in three days, I will raise it up. He didn't say we will raise it up. I will raise it up. The Most High, she will take you and raise it up. You can't raise yourself up. Just like you can't give yourself a name. How are you going to give yourself a name when you still don't even know your own purpose? That was the purpose of giving people biblical or Hebrew names is you saw the purpose within that person. But we got people giving each other title, giving each other their own title, their own names, and ain't even fulfilling half of the names that he got. <clears throat> they gotta make sense, man. So he said he's gonna destroy our temple, that old man, and then he's gonna raise up a new temple, which he can use these vessels without interruption, without chaos or defilement. See, he ain't gonna have no corruptible kingdom. He's gonna have an incorruptible kingdom. And that was the problem in the Old Testament. Is we got too tied onto materialistic things and natural things and forgotten about the spiritual things. We forgot about all those spiritual attacks we saw in Egypt. We forgot about all uh, how 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 he saved a family out of the whole world in the flood. We forgot about how he split the sea, huh? We forgot about how he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We forgot about these things. Because we got too attached to what we saw. Israel always got Israel always needs signs, man. Israel always needs signs. I was just talking to my wife about this. He went up to the Pharisees, because the Pharisees said, so who gave you the authority? Who gave you the authority to do these things? He said, Answer this one question, then I'll answer you. The immersion that John immersed with, was it of heaven or was it of man? Hmm? And they were so prideful. That they didn't want to answer. And that's for a lot of us. We be sitting there trying to figure out what's going on with you. Why you going through what you're going through. But you're so prideful in your own head that you can't answer. Most of us are more prideful quietly than outwardly. Mm. How you do that? Humble pride. So you got passive aggressive people. How you do that? Deception. <laughs> you got passive aggressive people. How you do that? How you quiet and aggressive? I don't understand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got we got to stop. Small anger, like. We got to stop with the pride. They couldn't even answer that, and it was right in the face. See, we we got so caught on the tabernacle, we didn't understand that the tabernacle was actually a representation of Israel, and we didn't even see it. We just thought it was this big, nice tabernacle where the Father resided, not realizing that this Ark of Covenant, that this menorah, that that, that the shofars and the coverings over the tabernacle was a representation of the spirit that was in Israel. You understand? This is the purpose of this. Keep reading. Nineteen. Chapter two, right? Yeah. And Jehoshua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Mm -hmm. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. And would thou read it up? In three days. So they still think, think about man's hands. They think about carnal. Being very carnal. So you tell me, we built this temple in 46 some days. And you think, you? You gonna do it in three days? See, they lost the spirit in the law. They lost 
the spirituality of understanding the creator. And what did he say? But he spake of the temple of his body. Mm. They didn't realize he was speaking of the spiritual temple and not the physical. But unfortunately, he had to destroy the physical temple, temple for them to realize he was the spiritual embodiment and representative of, of the Father. And if I may, I got to remember, he literally was the embodiment of Israel. He had to die for Israel because he was the husband. He was one with Israel. Mm -hmm. So he had to die. He literally, his temple had to be destroyed. Symbolically as the old death of Israel all together. Mm -hmm. You swimming in the water, huh? Right? So he literally had to take on the death for Israel because the temple was represented of Israel. Mm. So that old temple, the carnal temple, had to die. He was the embodiment of that carnal death of Israel so that when it was rose, rose the third day, we have the ability to actually be what we were really preferred to be. Dang. Spirit. We were meant to be spiritual men first. Because mm -hmm. Yah is spirit. The flesh is not real. Okay. The spirit is real. This is a hologram. A matrix. This is a matrix. This ain't this is real. This ain't real. This ain't the reality. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Okay. This is just something. And then the thing is, he literally put certain spirits in flesh so that it can... Don't stop yourself. Don't stop. He put us in the flesh to perfect the spirit in man so that way men can truly become like him. Oh, yeah. So it's been an ongoing process for that we would come to a level of maturity because those that would suffer with him, what? Mm -hmm. Will reign with him. Okay. And through your suffering, he said, through your sufferings, we will find perfection. So oh, yeah. the death of his body, the temple was only symbolic of Israel having to go through that carnal death. The temple, because when we were, when Israel was destroyed, remember he said, not one stone should lay upon another. Mm -hmm. In other words, he said, Israel is going to be totally scattered okay. to the four corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's what those stones not laying on one another meant that it was going to be a total disbursement of Israel throughout mm -hmm. the nations. Mm -hmm. You see? So we were always indicative of the temple. The temple was only a symbolic, natural thing of something that we were as a whole people. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go to John 12, 35 and 36. Thirty-one through thirty-six. Thirty-five and thirty-six. Thank you. Oh, man, that was off. This is the book of John, chapter uh, twelve, verse thirty-five. Then Yehoshua said unto them, "Them, yet a little while in the light with you. Yet a little while is the light with, with you. you. Come on, walk while ye have the light." <laughs> he said, "Walk, walk while you got the light." He's talking about even now. You have the light with you. You have this book. You have the light with you. So walk. While you have the light, come on. Least darkness come, up, less, come upon you. Less darkness. less darkness come upon you. Uh huh. For he that walketh in darkness know not whether he go. Right. So you know you don't even know which way how to walk this walk. You don't know how to apply these scriptures to your life. Right. Come on. While ye have light, believe in the light. While you got the light, because you were called to be light. Why you believe in the light? Walk in the light. Come on. That ye may be the children of light. That you now may be the children of light. And that's what it's called to be a son of Elohim. You are a reflection of your father. I keep telling y'all this. That's what bay means. This is a seed that is a representation of a house. We are the house of Yisrael. We are the house of Elohim. Therefore, we must work to become a son of Therefore, we can become a reflection of our Father. Yes. When it says less, that's like saying otherwise this. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Come on. These things spake Yehoshua and departed and did hide himself from them. Mm, so now he hid himself. Why? Because they did not comprehend what he was saying. They did not understand what they, he meant by the light because they've been caught in so much darkness of the law that they forgot the light of the law. And that was also endemic of him hiding himself was representing of him going away and, and, and now men will have to seek the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5 and 16. This book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Uh, let your light shine before men. So now, let your light shine before men. Come on. That they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. Why? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Because it's not about you. This is not about you getting your name out, what position you hold in the nation, how many views you got. This is about ultimately you glorifying your Father. And you can have the most views the most people in your congregation, but if people don't see the father in you, then you just dead weight. And you just a mouth mimicking what they've been taught. That's it. That's it. You are all called to glorify your father with your works. That's why we we take no credit. We take no credit. When we teach, this is not my word, this is Elohim's word. I take no credit for this. Because it was only by him I even understood this. Hallelujah. Think about it. How many of us would really be talking this type of wisdom without this book? Nobody. I don't care how long you've been in the truth. You take the book away. You sit there idle for just as long as you was in this truth. You ain't going to really start applying this. It ain't going to be with you no more. This book is what gives us good health in the spirit and natural. Understand? Keep going. Uh, read that one more time. Let your light shine before men. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Matthew 6 and 22. We've got a few more verses. And this is the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall, shall be full of light. What is the eye? What is the eye in us? The light. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, which is located where? With yeah. us on flesh. Where's it located? Mind. Your mind. People call it subpoena gland, the third eye. No. This is the temple and altar of Elohim, if you so choose to cleanse it. People have tried to take their own deception of what this is. Call it the third eye. You tapping into yourself. <laughs> penal gland. Let me look in myself. There ain't no good thing that dwells in No. You can't see within yourself. It's Elohim saying through your eyes of what you really doing. Huh? The singleness of I rep represents perception. Perception and oneness yes. in the, of the Father's mind, not your own. Okay. That's what that single eye, this is what that is. When you have a mind of Yah, your eye becomes single. You understand? That means you are in oneness of the Father. You will now become a perfect man. Hallelujah. So don't get that twisted when people try to bring this up. This ain't talking about no third eye, no penal gland. That's what people call it. This is talking about your mind being the temple and altar of the Father to sit within and use you now to be a vessel of his glory. Now let's get to it. Let's see how he uses us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's start at verse 11. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. But all these work, workers, that one in, his, in the self, same spirit. So all these things, all of us work, right? All of us work as one in the self, same spirit. So you're not getting no different spirit than me. You ain't getting a higher angel than me. <laughs> We're working in the same self spirit here. Huh? Just like Mikael, Gabriel, God guard, guard you, they guard me too. Ain't nothing different. Now, the only difference is, is who light shining brighter based upon their works. So you may be battling with Mikael and Satan in your head. Well, I just got Mikael fighting my own. That's the only time where we may be in differences. Other than that, when we in the spirit together, we in the self-same spirit. Nothing more, nothing less. Every man 
Emmanuel has a different servability. Mm -hmm. He serves according to what's been given for him to do. Okay. Can you read that? Dividing to every man. Uh, what is it? Severally. Severally as his will. Let's read that again. But all these work that one in the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally, severally as he will. Uh -huh. Keep going. For as the body is one. So as the body is one, come on. And it had many members. It had many members. And this is what my wife was talking about. She had to see me first become that body part in submission. So then now my vessel, my sector, I then can be the Mashiach in my house and work the many parts of my house. That's the point of this. It's just like a company. A big corporate company has different parts of it. And in these different parts, there's always one person who rules over many, and then goes down the same chain of events until you call uh, got something called uh, what's that joint called? Hierarchy. In the beginning stages. Hierarchy. No, not hierarchy. The beginning stages of it. Uh, I can't think of the word, but it's like you just you just beginning pretty much. The inception. Uh, -uh. Mm, I can't think of the word now. Pilot. Uh... No, no. Let's stop guessing. <laughs> Let's just stop guessing. I can't, I can't think of it now, but it's when you first begin. Just like us in the show, we first begin. And so then the first step then what huh? Foundation. Mm -mm. oh. Foundation. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so you then start as a servant and then you still serving as you grow, but now you're over people, brothers, family. And then once you have mastered that part, then what? You still a servant, but now you're over many. Family and many other people. And then you keep growing and now grow from, from officer to captain to chief to general. To judge, this is the level that we had worked at as a nation. We didn't skip steps. How you first born? You born and now you a king all of a sudden. You only been in the truth three years. How you or, or, or three months? Yeah, you got fifty people on you. How did that happen? You know what I'm saying? And so it's levels to this. We all, but we're all working in the self same spirit. We only have one master. At this point, which is Mashiach. Anybody else who's 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 a representative of Mashiach is called a co-shepherd or one who guides the sheep back to the original master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Are one body. Come on. So also is Christ. So this is not uh, our work. This is for the work of the Most High or the work of Mashiach. That's it. That's it. A lot of us, a lot of us even like to skip steps and not deal with people because we think we can deal with the Mashiach without people. No, if you got one part and, and he got one part and the whole thing of this body supposed to work is us coming together. If I got my middle, if I'm the middle finger and you the index finger and, and, and you the other, and we got all the other fingers, how are we supposed to become one hand and we're separated? Right. How are we supposed to come this? If we if we separate, can't all be thumbs. Can't all be palms either. Voltron. Supposed to be what? Voltron. Voltron. Supposed to form like Voltron. Come on. For by one spirit are we all baptized. For by one, one spirit we are all baptized. Come on. Into one body, whether we be <laughs> Jews or Gentiles. Mm, so you, <laughs> you got a choice. Either you level up or get replaced. Either you level up, you, you this is the thing about most. He don't he ain't got no respect to persons. He don't care if you a Jew. He don't care if you a, a Goyim. He gonna he gonna take those who wanna serve him in sincerity and truth and actually be used for righteousness. Not self game or vanity. You understand? Come on. Whether we be bond or free. Mm. And have been all made to drink to one spirit. So we coming out, we drinking the same cup. Your cup ain't bigger than mine. You ain't drinking no different wine than I'm drinking. We drinking the same cup. Come on. For the body is not one member, but many. Hallelujah. Isaiah 8, 20. We gonna close it right here. Isaiah 8, 20. Isaiah 
Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. Uh -huh. To the law and to the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. Who's the testimony? Yoshua. Yehoshua, he's the testimony. Come on. If they speak not according to this word, if they speak not according to this whole book. Why? It is because there is no light in them. Because there is no light in them. And that's the end all be all, people. We are to, we are to rededicate ourselves to our vessels and temples, so that we can now fulfill our purpose in rededicating the temple, Mashiach, back on this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise the Lord. Yeah, if they speak not according to this book, it is because there is no light in them. Okay. So, hallelujah. That concludes the lesson. Are there any comments or are there any questions? Yeah, I got a question. About the, uh, when you say it, the no Jew or Gentile, so what, did, what does that mean? Like, it, means, it, it, it means this. I keep saying it. For those who want to serve him in sincerity and truth, He's going to use whether that be Jew or whether that be Gentile. He said he's looking for the children of light, not just the children of Israel, but the children of light. See, we can't keep skipping past that verse in Revelation 18. We said, All knees shall bend, and of all nations, too. So that's telling me what? That even the nations is going to be there to serve the Most High. He's not a respective person. He just chose us to be the kingdom, the kings and priests of this, of this realm. And if you ain't fulfilling your role, what use he got in you? But he do got a secure number. Just like a CEO, it's a certain quota they got to meet. Facts. <laughs> it's a certain quota. They ain't going to replace everybody until they get the right people. And it's the same with the father. He gonna, if you ain't, ain't no use, he going to replace you. And if it got to come down to him using Gentile, he going to do that. Who are you to say otherwise? Who are we to say any otherwise? So that's what that is, man. All praise to the most high. Any other comments or questions? We good? All right, with that, we say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.